Here are the five academic tools you've not heard about. The first one is Smodin. Smodin has got a load of different functionalities. If you go to Smodin, you log in, you can see you've got rewrite, plagiarism, AI writing, you've got all these options down here. You've got AI chat, you've got homework, you've got summarizer and more. Look, they've even run out of space here, so they've got more tools. The one thing that I'm interested though for academia is the AI writing and the research paper. So if you click on here, you can see you've got a load of options, language options, then you put in a title or keywords, then you've got standard or supercharged article, then you can select the number of paragraphs you want, then you can say whether or not you want Google Scholar search, you want an introduction and discussion, and then you can put an abstract as well. I did this, if I go to my documents, and I did it for transparent electrode materials for flexible devices. And so here we go, transparent Electro materials for flexible electronics, or well, that's what I actually put. So it put out a load of quite interesting results. Then it's got another section. Why are transparent electronic materials important for flexible electronics? There, it gives you one of the reasons, you know, why it's important. Then it looks at other materials, metal nanowires, silver nanowires. Then they've also got thinner silver nanowires, then they've got graphene, they've got all of the different things that actually I researched when I was doing this as a postdoc. And here's the one thing I really like about this. If you go down to the bottom, I've always been a little bit concerned about the sorts of references this sort of stuff pulls up, especially considering it's like a jack of all trades and not specifically for research but it's done a pretty good job. Now, I'm not saying these resources are perfect. You still have to go use your magic academic brain to find out whether or not they're suitable for inclusion in this as a first draft. But uh, I think for its price and for the quality of information it actually spits out, as well as all of the other stuff that you get access to down here, um, I think this could be a really nice thing to use um, if you do want to start with your research paper to get that first draft using AI. You know, it's not perfect, nothing is, but this is really powerful and something you should know about. Smodin, interesting. Finding academic papers is so important if you're gonna find the most important research in your field, but it's a pain in the ass to go through loads and loads of different search options for finding research papers. I've done a video about sort of like the process I would use, go check this one out here, but this is a tool that I think is really, really useful and powerful. It's called Insightful. Insightful allows you to accelerate your research. They always say that, they always say that. But this one helps you build a network of academic papers that they'll analyze for you to discover the most recent literature. And this is something that I've not seen before where you can select two papers and it will show you how the literature connects them. This is really important for telling the story of your research or any literature review. That's interesting to me. I've not seen that anywhere else. So uh, I'm gonna actually see if I can connect research from a very, very important scientist me. So here's one of my first papers, a multi-layered approach to blah, blah, blah. I'm gonna take that. The one thing I like about this, where are we, we're here. One thing I like about this, you put it in and then it actually recommends, is it this one? Yes, it is. I'll take that one. And then I've got my other paper that was published much later in my postdoc. And we'll see if we can connect them, um, one of my first papers to one of my last papers. That's interesting to me. And it's a great way of telling the story of the evolution of research. So there we are. It's popped up again. I like that one. Let's search. So, literature connector, it's always quite quick. I found this sort of like a really speedy uh, system considering that it's going through so many different papers. So it says it, to get from my first paper to one of my later papers, that uh, it says minimum three hops, maximum hops, papers search, paths found, and papers in paths. So these are 26 papers I clearly need to know about if I was to continue in this research field. And these are sorted by um, size. So if there's loads of connection to, to them, they're much bigger. These you can see have just got like one or two connections. These have got loads and loads coming out the other side. So this is really important. It's really sort of like a really nice way to see how research 
has evolved between papers and I'd be interested to put some really sort of like obscure connections and see how many hops it takes. But ultimately I need to know everything about these papers, everything about these papers. It just makes it so much easier to find the relevant literature. And these I think are hyper relevant. It's like mega relevant stuff for your research. Get two papers, plug them in, look at everything in the middle. You've just got yourself a literature review, perfect. You can also put it into Zoltero with their plugin. Brilliant. Check it out. Insightful.xyz.com was clearly taken. If you're in the clinical and biomed research area, I would check out Evidence Hunt. Evidence Hunt is a really cool way. Here, I'm going to go to New Chat. Um, is a really great way of finding literature and summaries of semantically searched research questions. Boom. So here we are. Let's just use one of these. So hi, how can I help you? You're so polite. I want to find out about, here we are, how to assess stroke risk in atrial fibrillation. I'm going to click that and you'll see it goes away and uh, finds the most important evidence. It also summarizes it for us and puts it in nice bite-sized chunks. This is taking forever. I'm going to spin in my chair until it's finished. Oh. Let's go back. New chat. Can mindfulness prevent burnout? Let's try that one. Oh, thank Christ for that. It's finished. Okay, so based on the top search results, the answer to your question is yes. Practicing mindfulness techniques and it says systematic review or a study on Chinese college students. Uh, if I click on these, I wonder what, there we are. It pops up and this is from 2023, super relevant. I love it when they actually look for recent developments because that's so important. Um, and also look, it tells you whether or not it's a population question, an intervention, control outcome and conclusion. Great way to scan the uh, abstracts that are given. So if I want to find out the outcome, sleep quality and perceived stress of two blah, 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 brilliant. So really like this. this is a great way to actually sort of scan the literature and find the most important stuff if you are in the clinical and biomedical research field. Um, I wish something like this existed outside of this field. Fingers crossed it comes soon. Do you know what's really annoying in research other than your supervisor's little quirks that are so weird that you're kind of questioning whether or not they're a real person and not just an alien that's been flown in to do research to make the world a better place? It is trying to find all of the literature across different databases. Check out smartsearch.org. Look at this. It goes through all of these, PubMed, Google Scholar, Lenscopus, and many more. Nice. So here we go. Search the best databases in academia. That's exactly what I want to do. So scholarly records, yes. Keywords or subjects. I think I'm going to go keywords. Let's have a look at all of the keywords that I male grooming. When did I search for that? Nice. All right, I'm going to look for um, uh, nanomaterials. Okay, great. Select keyword. Nano, nano. Oh, na chemistry. Select keywords. Why is it not in there? Okay, uh, let's go down and uh, look at chemistry. I'm going to go and look at uh, carbines. Nice. That's what I want. Cut catalyzed carbines. Mm, does it get much sexier? Select keywords. And now I can go in and look at all the databases that actually contain information related to my field. So here we are. I go in and uh, you can see that CAS SciFinder, Google Scholar, One World. So all of these are where I could potentially get information about my field. But unfortunately, you know, I wouldn't know half of these, to be honest. Core, never heard of that one. Semantic Scholar, I know that one, I'm clever. Um, Naver Academic, what the hell is that? So these are databases that I could start to include in my literature search. And all I need to do then is uh, go in and uh, find all of the things in this database much easier than having to go and rely only on stuff like Google Scholar, Semantic Search, Elicit even, like all of those things uh, are incredibly powerful, but this is gonna make your literature search even better. You can also sort of look at books, conference papers, journal publications. One thing I like if we go back in this, searches, searches the databases, what? 
Searches the databases must support default, so show largest database first, great. Systematic keyword searching, forward citation searching, I like the idea of that, and also gray literature searching. I want to find unpublished documents. Gray, sneaky, the underbelly of academic publishing. I want to see about that. So, super powerful if you're um, wanting the best databases in academia. Easy done. All of the thought process for finding these important databases has been made much easier. Go check it out. Automatic writers. Some people love them, some people hate them. I'm somewhere in the middle. I think they can be a very useful tool if they're used correctly. This one is Yomu AI. Yo Moo, Yo Moo AI, here we go. At the moment, look at that, they got a discount code, brilliant. But this is an academic AI for writing your paper faster. It is able to simplify the process of thinking about the structure of what to include. Um, I've been trialing it. I'm a little bit on the fence about how powerful this really is, but I think you should know about it still. So once you've signed up and uh, I've paid some of my hard earned money to access a trial of this, um, and I wanted to know about the emerging nanomaterials in enhancing the efficiency of organic photovoltaic devices. That's what I wanted. So you can see that I chose to have the different sections created for me. I kind of like that I always work with the structure first before delving into the details. And uh, it has got this auto writer. So you need to go up to settings and you need to turn on autocomplete. But ultimately, all you need to do then is start writing and these things will pop up in gray. So you can see schematic representation of organic photovoltaic devices shown. Yeah, I like that. I'll have that. And then um, it says, enter some text or press shift tab for continuation. Um, so fundamentals of nanomaterials. So I'll just put in nano, come on states, nanomaterials for um, photo, oh, Jesus, come on, voltaics. This is terrible. All right, never ever listen to me for spelling. Nanomaterials include, Let's see what we've got. Include, we'll double click. Um, let's say, okay, there we are. Organic semiconductors, inorganic metal materials and carbon nanotubes. Okay, that's interesting. Then if I want to, to actually sort of like add a citation in for that, I can select it. Then you've got this thing that pops up that says use AI. Then I can paraphrase, shorten, expand, academize, academize. Make it more boring and super precise so that your reviewers love it. Um, then you summarize bullets to text. Oh, I like that one. So if you have bullets from a brainstorm, you could turn it into text. I do that a lot. Cite, and then we've got in depth. Okay, so at the moment, I wanna see what citations it can come up with for that sentence. And here we are, it's come up with some options. I would need to go through his carbon nanotubes, the route towards applications. Yeah, I'm gonna include that. I can go check it out. Brilliant, there's a PDF, I can go read it before it goes in and then I can just quickly say, add citation, it's been in and then right down the bottom, it's actually included them in this uh, referencing section and we can change the referencing style here so that uh, it's easy to just add references and citations, love it. So. This is an equivalent to something like Jenny AI. I don't think this is as powerful at the moment, but I do like it. Um, I do think you should sort of like compare this one and Jenny AI, but ultimately this could be really good. So there we have it. There are the five academic AI tools that you've not heard about. Let me know in the comments below what you would add. And also, if you like this video, go check out this one where I talk about the six academic AI tools you'll actually use for research because they're super useful and powerful. Go check it out, it's a great watch.